You are welcome to Believers Global TV. Beloved in Christ, I implore you not to miss this important message you are about to listen to. It is not by accident that you are here on this channel right now. I strongly believe that there is something God is about to do in your life through this teaching. And that is why I encourage you to listen to the end. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Today is a day of divine favor and testimony. Stay to the end. Don't go away. God bless you. Have the Holy Ghost take control of your life. The Bible said, It is not given to man that walketh to order his steps. No matter how wise you are, you don't know tomorrow. So allow the one who knows tomorrow to order your steps. The whole idea behind spirituality is to be led by the Spirit of God. He said, as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Romans 8, 16. He said, they, 14. They are the sons of God. Who are sons of God? Those who have power to manage his estate. But you have to be led for you to function as a son. But unfortunately, many don't have they don't give the Holy Ghost time. And so they don't enjoy restoration. And they are wondering, how come these people testify? Are they honest? Yes, they are. They are being led. You know what the Bible said? In Isaiah 48 verse 21, it said they tested not why he led them. This is wilderness. But he said even in the wilderness, they tested not why he led them. They tested not. Isaiah 48 21. They tested not why he led them. The Bible said he cleaved the rock also and the rock brought out water for them. He spoke to the rock and the waters gushed out. How can people be walking in abundance of water in the river? Because they are being led. Isaiah 30, 21. He said if you are in the wrong direction, you will hear a voice behind you telling you that's not the way to go. So God is there as a compass to guide you into your inheritance. But if you don't allow him to lead you, there will be crisis. They tested not why he led them. So if you are struggling, it's because God is not leading you. He said, my sheep heareth my voice and they obey. So leading is not just to hear, it's a copulation between hearing and obedience. When he talks, you follow. You give him room to be in charge. And in case he has not spoken, you go and inquire of him. Lord, I want to do this business. What do you have to say? I want to marry this person. What do you have to say? I want to travel to this place. What do you have to say? Don't look for green pastures. You are not a cow. I've told you before. Don't look for green pasture. Seek divine direction. We read in the Bible, the man who sought green pasture ended up with a land that was burnt. Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham and Isaac needed to make a choice. Abraham was looking to heaven. Isaac was looking at the plain of the field. And he saw, he saw the plains of Sodom. They were green. He said he has found a jackpot. Few years later, Sodom was to be destroyed. He escaped only with himself and two of his daughters. And the outcome of these two people are generations that became enemies of God. Ammon and Moab. Because a man didn't know anything about divine direction. When he came to Abraham, he was wiser, he was smarter, he was greater, but he never relied on his intelligence. The Bible said Abraham looked up to heaven and inquired of God. And God told him, now that you have inquired of me, look north, south, east and west. Everything you see is yours. So Abraham didn't need to go to Sodom. He became the lord of Sodom. When Sodom was about to be destroyed, Abraham sat in his house at the gate of Mamre. God came to him and said, I want to go and destroy Sodom. Because he's now the owner of Sodom. So the same Sodom that Lot went to belonged to Abraham. I don't have to go to the US to enjoy the fruit of that land. I don't have to go to the UK. I will only go there if God is leading me. There are many missionaries and prophets who are now selling Okoroko in London. Fire has died. They are now Okoroko sellers. I'm not saying don't go to a place where you have a better life. But I'm saying, before you think of a better life, you are a spiritual man. What is God saying? What is God inspiring you? That is where your secret and your strength is. If you are a lizard in Nigeria, sir, you can never become crocodile in Australia. 
And meanwhile, lizards in London suffer more than lizards in Africa. Because at least here in Africa, the roads are not all tied. They can find some leftovers and eat. There are no leftovers anywhere. The whole road is tied from, tied in London from house to house. Follow divine leading. You'll see people every day, greener pasture, greener pasture. You are not a cow. You are a spiritual man. Allow God to lead you. If it is God leading you to London, go in good faith. The Lord bless you. If it's God leading you to America, go. The Lord bless you. But if God says stay in Africa or God sit here, Americans will serve you. Sit here. The British man will serve you. It's not about the place. It's about the who. I'm not pursuing places. I'm following the spirit. His name is the Holy Ghost. He said, I have many things to tell you, but you cannot receive it. How be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all reality. I have a guide. The name of that guide is Alos Paracletos. You know what it means? It means helper. It means advocate. It means strengthener. It means guide. It means provider. It means standby. Makoba Rakataya. That's why my life cannot fail. Because the Alos Paracletos is a standby. When my power shuts down, there is a standby generator. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. When I need counsel, there is a wise guy. He will tell me, don't go left, go right. Don't go left, go right. When I make mistakes, there is an advocate before the Father. Even the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth, He defends my case. He argues my cause. That's why I live in perpetual victory. Intervention and restoration is a product of divine leading. Elohim Adonai. Elohim. Elohim Adonai. Elohim. Elohim Adonai. Elohim Elohim Allow God to lead you. It's not given to man that walk at toward that step. See, all my life I want to be I wanted to be a military officer. I started as a child wanting to be a pilot and then as I grew up I wanted to be a military person flying the plane all my life I walked like a gallant man but when the time came I was to enter the Navy but there was no signal if I went maybe I would have died at training I had all the recommendations I needed at the time but that was not the direction to go. Today, my friends who went to the army are my sons. Generous are people I can call. One phone call. They say, what do you want? Never, air admi my, never officers like rare admirers are my personal friends. Some come to my house and say, let's have fellowship. These are people I should salute and they'll say, Kai, go, go, to, go to Yobe. Go to Yenegua. But today, they say, Apostle, please, let's, let's meet and have fellowship. I'm telling you, if God leads you, even in the wilderness, you will not know test. They tested not why he led them through the desert. He cleaved the rock also, and the waters gushed out. It's a realm of abundance. a captain or a major but today I have sons who are colonels lieutenant colonels they call me and say yes sir what do you want us to do are you following follow Jesus follow him he has a better plan he said before you were formed in your mother's womb I knew you I ordained you I ordained you I respect them as I should but God has put some level of honor because he has led you.
a rare admirer called me and said, I've been posted to head a base in Lagos. Please come and dedicate it. How am I supposed to be able to enter that kind of office if I was in the army? Maybe I should be his adjutant. Do you know what God can do? You are using your small brain that is like your fist to order a life that was created from eternity past to be lived into eternity future. Divine restoration. Thank you for staying to the end of this message. But before you leave, I want to tell you a story. There was a father who has two sons. And so he sent two of his sons to the farm, like to go and harvest yam. So he called them both and sent them. The elderly one says he is going to go, that he is going to like go on the errands. But the younger one says he is not going to go. And so they left the presence of the man. And behold, the one that says he will go to the farm does not actually went. But the one who says he was not going to go, at a point he thought within himself and said, my father has been very responsible for me, so I will go. So he changed his mind and went. So I want to ask, among these two sons, who actually does the will of the father? It is the younger one. So as you have listened to this message, it's not about listening alone. If you're listening, and probably you feel stirred up. But later on, the zeal, the passion that you had when you were listening to this message dies, and you do not apply this message, it means the time that you dedicated listening to this message was a waste. So it is not about what you share alone. It's not about the messages that you listen to alone it is more of what you take out of th those messages and then apply to your daily lives to make you um better so i do hope and i pray that this message will transform your life will turn your life around